Dear students, the topic is excretory organs in invertebrates. Before going to the topic, please subscribe my channel. Press the bell icon for notifications. Like, share among your friends and comment. Excretion is the process of elimination of nitrogenous waste material from the body of an organism or cell. In this video, we can discuss about the excretory organs in invertebrates. You know, there are various phylums involved in invertebrata from protozoa, porifera, nidaria, platyhelminthes, nematelminthes, annelida, arthropoda, mollusca, echinodermata, like. Here, in each and every phylum, having different excretory organs. For example, the phylum porifera, nidaria, and echinodermata no excretory organs present because the nitrogenous waste produced is called ammonia which will directly diffuse into aquatic medium so there is no excretory organ for in these phylums among invertebrates echinoderms nidarians and sponges have no excretory organs they excrete ammonia by simple diffusion. Their body fluids, if present, are closely similar to seawater in composition and regulation of this operate at the cellular level. In protosoma, the excretory organ is contractile vacuole. You know, contractile vacuole helps for the process of excretion and osmoregulation in protista or protosovans. Let we can see the detailed structure of contractile vacuole and its function. The contractile vacuoles of protozoans they occur more frequently and more active in freshwater species than in closely related marine species. In freshwater, the concentration of dissolved substances in the cell is greater than in the external medium and the cell takes in water by osmosis. If the contractile vacuole is put out of action, the cell increases in volume. If the concentration of salts in the medium increases, which would have the effect of decreasing the rate of osmosis, the rate of output by the contractile vacuole diminishes. The fluid eliminated by the vacuole is more dilute than the cytoplasm. Flame cells, protonephridia or nephridia, that is seen in platyhelminthes, Nematelminthes, Annelida and Rotifers. Nephridia is present in Annelids, Nematins, Flatworms and Rotifers. Each Nephridium has the form of a very fine tubule, often of considerable length. One end usually open into the body cavity and the other to the exterior. In some analytes, however, the tubule does not open into the body cavity but ends internally in a cluster of cells of a special type known as solenocytes or flame cells. The possession of solenocytes by some analytes is one of the characteristics that allies them with other non-segmented phyla that have no true body cavity. That means platyhelminthes and nematelminthes. They also have a system of tubule opening at the surface and ending internally in flame cells embedded among the other cells of the body. In most cases, there is no regular arrangement of the various parts of the system. Animals belonging to all these phyla are primarily aquatic and in few cases non the main excretory product is ammonia. The molluscan excretory organ is renal gland. Have a look on renal gland. The renal gland is a relatively wide tube opening from a sac surrounding the heart that is called pericardium at one end and to the mantle cavity effectively to exterior at the other. There is a single pair of renal glands in some form one member of the pair may be reduced or absent. Clams have the simplest arrangement. The region nearest to the pericardium has glandular wall and gives way to a non-glandular vital tube that extend to the urinary opening. The vast majority of molars are aquatic and excrete nitrogen in the form of ammonia. 
In octopus, however, nitrogen is excreted as ammonium chloride, which is quite strongly concentrated in the urine. Terrestrial snails and slugs excrete uric acid, but may also excrete ammonia when living in moist surroundings. Is green gland, Malpighian tubules, and coxal gland. See, green gland is the excretory structure of arthropoda. That means, you know, crustaceans. And Malpighian tubules are the excretory structure present in insects. Coxal glands are the excretory organ present in aquatic arthropods. Coxal glands are tubular organs, each opening on the basal region or coxa of a limb. The ancestral arthropod had a pair of glands in every segment of the body. In modern crustaceans, only a single pair of gland and in higher crustacean, these open at the basis of the antennae. Each antennal gland is a compact organ formed of a single tubule folded upon itself. The tubule arises internally as a small sac. The coelomic sac, which open into a wider region, the labyrinth, having complex infoldings of its wall. The labyrinth open either directly into the bladder as in marine lobsters and crabs or into a narrow part of the tubule, the canal, which in turn opens into the bladder as in freshwater crayfishes. See this diagram shows coxal gland having bladder, tubule and labyrinth then saccule, sac like structure. The Malpighian tubules, which vary in number from 2 in some species to more than 100 in others, end blindly in the body cavity and open not directly to the exterior but to the alimentary canal at the junction between midgut and hindgut. The primary urine issuing from Malpighian tubule has to pass through the rectum before it leaves the insect's body and in the rectum its composition is markedly changed. The insect excretory system therefore comprises the Malpighian tubules and the rectum acting together. Dear friends, thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and please subscribe my channel.